Hi there, my name's Adam Fielding, and today I'm going to show you how to create a quick hybrid cinematic cue using a combination of Reason 13 and a few of my Reason Plus sound packs, most notably the Reason 13 Cinematic Toolkit sound pack. As well as introducing the likes of Polytone and an updated interface, Reason 13 also includes a whole host of new sounds and patches compared to earlier versions. The Reason 13 Cinematic Toolkit leverages some of these new sounds in so-called designer patches for quickly laying down punchy impacts, interesting sweeps, and other transitional ear candy. Anyway, enough of the preamble, time to get noise making, let's go go go! So, to begin with, I've dipped into the Reason 13 Cinematic Toolkit folder, which I've already downloaded from the Reason Companion app. If you're a Reason Plus user and you don't have the Reason 13 Cinematic Toolkit pack downloaded, just fire up the Companion and you should be able to find it there by searching for it. So I'm going to play a few patches just so you can get a feel for what kind of thing is actually in here. So this is called Bass Drama Pulse, and because it's a run patch, I'm just going to start the sequencer and here's what that sounds like. So it's a nice steady kind of bassy sound with plenty of scope for a bit of variation using the controls on the front. Uh, and here's a bass squelch pulse. Similar sort of vibe again. Now here's where things get kind of interesting. We've got these so-called designer patches and the impact and noise patches. You can see there's a note value specified in the file name, C3 to B3. So by pressing any note from C3 to B3 on your MIDI controller, you can play a different sound like so. So that's great for accentuating sort of drop beats and that kind of thing. I imagine I'm going to be using that quite a lot in this particular project. Uh, and in a similar way, we've got the Brahm designer, which is great for those sort of cinematic Brahm sort of sounds. This also has a chop dial on the front, which you can use to introduce that kind of choppy gating sound. So if we just turn that right down, So lots of sounds for us to play with stored away in there. I think the best thing to do would be to start with just a really simple, steady bass pulse. So I'm going to use the bass drama pulse here. Just drag that in and close the browser. And let's fire up the sequencer window. So let's just have four bars, just a steady C note. Um, it'll sound like this. Maybe we should drop that an octave. So I'm just going to select that. Go to uh, Note Tools here, Transpose, and put that down an octave there. So let's give that a play. What I think would work really nicely to kind of add a bit of bit of tension it would be to introduce a bit of a pitch bend. So I'm just going to edit the pitch bend dial here and automate that so it goes down during the second bar and up during the fourth bar. So let's give that a quick listen in a second. So that sounds like this. So that's a nice, a nice start there. Um, I probably won't play with that too much more. I might just turn the filter decay down a bit and adjust the filter type so it's more of a kind of low end pulse. We can always open those up as the track progresses. So that's a, that's a nice little start. I think it makes sense to start the track with a bit of a swoosh. So um, I'm going to go to the browser and open up the reverse noises patch here. 
And this is similar to the designer patches, except it plays back um, half bar long reverse sounds. So it sounds a bit like this. So I feel like it'd be good to start the track with one of those. Um, maybe keep that sort of choppy sound in there so that the listener already has an idea of what sort of tempo and rhythm to expect. So, so again, I mentioned it's half a bar, two beats long for each reverse sound. That's how the, how the patch is designed. So if we just have... Now it would make sense to have some kind of impact sound to sort of introduce the track as well. So let's have the impact designer and the chops turned down on that one. So I'm going to close the browser here and just pop in a an impact. Yeah, I feel like a, a sort of deeper, more subby hit makes sense here. So I'm just going to drop that in there. And maybe let's let's add some some Brahms in there as well, so that we get a bit of bit of variation. Now I'm thinking what I might do here is turn the chop amount down on the Brahms and just introduce some extra chops as this part is playing. So let's have a Brahm here. Which I feel like one with a bit more sort of high end would make more sense. Maybe not. Hmm. And let's add a couple extra here, which I'm going to then chop up using the chop dial. So let's just have a couple of extra notes. So I'm going to automate the chop dial here and draw in an automation curve there. So it sounds like this. I'm just going to turn the level of the Brahm designer down. As you can see, I'm not really doing much mixing here at the moment. I'm just getting this idea down. Then maybe I'll have a play with that afterwards. Now, I really want to kind of mess around with the impact and Brahm designer notes. I think I want to keep those in the same position. So I'm going to use uh, the note tools and transpose function. And there is handily, there is a randomize function. So if we set that to C3 to B3, we just click the randomize button. And now they're going to be completely randomized. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. Okay, so that's a that's a nice start. Okay, so we've we've got some uh, got some movement going on here. Maybe we should add some more percussion. So let's go for the percussive backbone and drop that into the rack here. And I'm going to turn the sequence off and automate that button so that the sequence only starts during this section here. I'm going to get rid of the note length. So I'm not using that. So if we just play that. And I'm going to mute most of these percussive parts uh, because I just really want the sort of the more the sort of kick and the driving rhythm. So it sounds like this. So we're getting somewhere here. Now let's unmute some of these percussive backbone elements, like so. So I've just right clicked, select automate, and now I'm just going to unmute those parts. So we'll get some of those hats back. Yeah, I'm not big on that 
particular branch. So I'm just going to change that note there. And maybe I'll change this one as well. Okay, so we've got a nice kind of building section going on there. Um, it's just a couple of things I really feel like would make sense to add here. So I think we need a bit more percussion in this final section just to kind of vary things up a bit. Uh, so we've got the percussive rolls, which I haven't actually touched yet. So I'm just going to close that combinator and bring in percussive rolls. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. So I'm going to turn sequencer off there and close the browser and just turn the sequencer on during this section. So let's, let's have a quick listen to how that sounds. Okay, so I think we're, we're getting somewhere here. I think ideally, although we've got these, these little kind of reverse noises here, I feel like it'd be really good to have a proper long riser before what I assume is going to be a drop into a more sort of atmospheric ambient section. So I'm going to go back to the browser and I'm going to go to my sound packs folder and have a look at, let's do a quick search for risers, risers and sweeps and just get rid of that. And so this is another sound pack I created called risers and sweeps. And as you can see, it's full of risers that vary in length from one bar to, to four bars. Uh, so I'm going to use a long riser. I think there's one here called liquid rise, which I, I think that would work quite nicely. So I'm just going to drop that in the rack here. Looks different because it's from a different sound pack. And I'm going to close that and just draw in four bars of C3 because everything's playing at C. So let's just extend that and give that a listen. Let's, let's hear how that sounds in the context of the track. So there we go. I think that that riser makes a big difference there in kind of adding to the kind of the tension and the build there. So I guess if we're dipping out of the Reason 13 Cinematic Toolkit sound pack, it'd be nice to, to add some other touches which would kind of make sense in this sort of track. So I like how during sort of more trailery type tracks, you sometimes get those piano sort of pings in there. So I'm going to add one of those. I'm going to use Radical Piano for this. So let's go to Radical Piano. And this is kind of my go-to setup when it comes to Radical Piano. I'm not entirely sure why it, it just is. That's kind of become my whole thing lately. Um, I say lately, going back to 2012 when it first came out. Um, so we're using a bit of a mixture of an upright and a home grand, the jazz mic on the home grand and the close mic on the upright piano. I've adjusted the piano so it's slightly more towards the subdued end of the character. And if we're having this really big spacious sort of pling sound, uh, I think it makes sense to add a good dose of, of reverb. So I'm just really going to dial this in. So the algorithm set to arena, I'm turning the size right up and I'm going to roll off the lows because I don't really need those. Uh, that might be a bit much actually, but let's, let's give this a go. So I want sort of a high, high ping. So if we start So here's how that sounds with the intro sweep as well. Maybe I should make that a little harder, so I'm just going to adjust the velocity there. And maybe adjust the release as well on that, so let's turn that up. So we've got this nice build going on, but I feel like it, it makes sense to add some, some extra textural elements as well. Because at the moment, we've got kind of the bass pulse and all these, all these kind of like ear candy elements flying around. But I feel like there needs to be some kind of atmospheric thing to ground it a bit. So I'm going to go into another sound pack I created uh, called Grain Spaces, which I think would work really, really nicely here. So if I just remove that filter there, um, ooh, foreboding resonance. I like the sound of that. Um, so if I just again, so grain spaces is full of grain based sort of textural atmospheric sounds that sound like this. So 
So let's move that there. Just make sure that's connected properly. So if you look at the devices, it's a uh, it's just a grain going through an EQ, going through an audiomatic with some extra sort of reverb and delay sprinkled on top and a shimmer courtesy of Process Pianos, which is an interesting way of using Process Pianos. Um, so I'm just going to draw in another C3. Why not? And I think we should extend that through to the second section, I think, before the that big sort of build. Uh, so, yeah, if I just leave that there. And ideally, I'd quite like it to, to sort of fade in. So I'm going to use a low pass filter to sort of roll off the lows and then bring those in gradually as this section progresses. So let's let's leave that for now and give it give it a quick listen. So that, that kind of adds a nice a nice bit of variety there. I think I might roll the filter off a little bit at the start, a bit more as well. Um, so I've got a nice little textural thing going on there just to kind of give listeners something a little something to latch onto as well as everything else that's going on around there. Um, so it'd be nice to have another texture going on in there as well. Um, so let's have a quick look here and see what we've got. Um, ooh, darkly dreaming texture, that sounds... Sounds like it could be good. Ooh. Oh yeah, I think that could be really good for the rise and possibly after the drop as well. So if I just, just bring that in there and maybe do a similar thing here where I'm using the low pass filter to introduce a sort of fade as, as this goes. So it'd be nice to have at least some kind of melodic element, but I'm thinking something a bit more sort of uh, atmospheric. I don't want a straight up lead sound. So let's have a look at the browser again. And I know just the sound pack to dip into for this. So there's another sound pack I created called uh, Object Nocturnal Textures. Or is it? Nocturnal Landscapes, my mistake. Um, so this is full of sort of object-based atmospheric textures, so they sound a bit like this. Now I think my personal favorite from this particular bank is called Future Crimes, and I think that would be a really, really good one to start with, so. Yeah, yeah, I, th I really like that. So I think if we introduce that particular sound during this section. So we'll draw a nice four bar clip here. Um, so I think if we start at C4. Yeah, I like that. So let's just draw that in. With all of that done, let's give this a quick listen from start to finish. Here we go.
And there we have it, one hybrid cinematic queue created using Reason Plus devices and sound packs. I hope you've enjoyed watching how quickly and easily you can lay down ideas in this style using just a small selection of the new sounds available in Reason 13. For what it's worth, I would strongly recommend browsing through the Reason 13 factory sound bank, especially if you haven't done so in a while. There are some rather tasty treats and surprises in there. and. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from using these sounds and techniques in other musical genres. In fact, I would strongly encourage it. As always, thanks so much for joining me, and happy noise making. Cheers.